What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Brutally Speaking Podcast, the official podcast of Metal Nexus, where you can get show news, concert photos, metal going-ons, and so forth. And with me, as always, is Daniel Terry. How are you doing this early evening? I'm doing pretty good, man. I'm uh, I'm here. <laughs> I'm sorry I wasn't here last time. Well, you know, it's you have four kids in Halloween. I imagine that's like yeah. a quarter pound of candy per kid that you got to like then decalm down from that and get them out of costumes. And Absolutely. I'm sure it's just a, a whole thing and, you know, working it, and everything else on top of it. Working and then doing like eight other podcasts. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. It's definitely a lot. Uh, this episode's guest is uh, Ivan Moody. You might know him from Five Finger Death Punch, uh, but we are not going to talk about Five Finger Death Punch. Much to that dude's uh, chagrin, probably, of why do you have someone on when a band puts out a new record or a new tour and you don't talk anything about it? Because that's oh, what we man. do over here at the Brutally Speaking Podcast. We don't like talking about the thing that you think the person's there to talk about. Yeah, and that dude's already sitting there at his laptop ready to write the most scorching iTunes review <laughs> that he could possibly come up with um so ivan is actually on to talk about his uh, moody's medicinals it's a line of cbd and non-cbd uh, health and wellness products um, um you know we, sometimes we get these these interviews and uh they're like i said not typically what you think the person is on to talk about and when you get you know ivan moody is available to talk about moody's or medicinals and i mean it's the singer of one of, arguably one of the biggest rock metal bands in the world like you just take the opportunity sure that being said have you ever used CBD products at all? Never. <laughs> all right. So I've I've uh, traveled where, where green is, is, is legal and, and okay to go to a store and buy some, which is weird. Um, but uh, I don't know if I told anyone this story, really, including you. Um, so my wife and I, we went to Buffalo last year. We went to this area, and there was like a, a bunch of uh, bars and so forth, uh, kind of like an entertainment area. And uh, we stopped at this, like, gas station. Actually, it wasn't a gas station. It was just kind of like a liquor store. Aww. And we, like, my wife saw what appeared to be uh edibles so she was like oh we should get some and i was like all right yeah fuck it and we were expecting them to be like you know kind of edible prices when you go places and uh they weren't they were only i think like maybe like 15 bucks or something like that so i was like holy shit look at all these edibles we're getting for like this cheap like crazy and uh i took some and then you know it usually takes about an hour for them to digest and kick in and uh nothing happened and then uh i took another one because I was like, all right, if I ain't feeling that, I, I mean, maybe the second one. And then I'm just prepared to be fucked if it all kicks in at once. Right. And, and I remember my wife just was like, how do you feel? I was like, ah. I was like, I don't feel anything. I was like, but my back feels great. And then come to find out as I was looking at the packaging a couple of days later, because I just kept eating them. <laughs> and uh, then I realized. Candy is candy, right? Yeah, they were, they were uh, peach rings, too. So, like, some of my favorites. And, there you uh, go. No, they were CBDs. They were CBD gummies. So it was my first uh, real in interaction with taking CBDs. And uh, I definitely got to say I'm, I'm a huge fan. I haven't partaken in buying any more and using them regularly. Um, but today I was lifting something at work and sneezed while I was holding a, a somewhat heavy package. And uh, my back hurts <laughs> in a different oh, spot no. than it normally does. So I was just like, ah. knowing that we were going to do this chat tonight, I was like, Maybe I should get some uh, Moody's Medicinals and uh, then I could have come home or popped a, popped a CBD and uh, my back would be feeling good. Yeah, maybe maybe that's what I need to do uh, because I uh, I have the opposite problem. See, when I sneeze, it like pops something in my back. So like I have to sneeze, like my back will start hurting halfway through the day and I feel like somebody just needs to like push on my back to pop it a little bit. I should probably go see a chiropractor or something, but um, but whenever I sneeze, it like pops all of that stuff in my back and makes it feel better. And I was like, that that can't be healthy. Like that can't be a good thing. So it sounds like when you're sneezing, it's popping your back into a not optimal position. And when I sneeze, it's popping my back into a more optimal position. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, I don't know. There's so many things. I mean. I sleep on my side, and now I found out that they make pillows just for people who sleep on their sides, which I was like, don't all, like, aren't pillows kind of like ambidestrics or something? Uh, or, yeah, you know. That, Could you that put word. it anywhere, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know. But all that said, uh, this is a fun chat. Actually, um, something else that kind of got mentioned today, too, Kill Switch and August Burns Red. Uh, it's where it got announced. The second yeah. date of that is actually going to be here in Grand Rapids, so... Uh, if that person who left the review is listening, I'm uh, I'm gonna put in and try to get Jesse on the podcast. It's not gonna ask him anything about Kill Switch Engage. No, no, I'm not. I'm actually gonna ask him about the weapon uh, and everything else other than Kill Switch Engage. The uh, Empire shall fall. Oh, definitely, dude. I there's. I mean, to be completely fair, they were working on a record, and then Jesse joined Kill Switch officially. 
Uh, and then it was, oh, and when Jesse comes back, we're going to record. And I do remember there being some recordings, but obviously that music has not come out. So I don't know in what iteration or how far we are into the Empire Shall Fall record. So we got another Blood Has Been Shed situation on our hands. All we got to do is talk about it. And then everybody <laughs> everybody will start calling people and being like, yeah, when are you, when are you guys going to do this? Yeah. So looking forward to that. Uh, Ken Susie was in the news as of today, uh, again, for basically a misleading headline. <laughs> but <laughs> oh, We don't know anything about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still, still. Actually, we got that was the thing that tipped me off to it is we had we got linked uh, into that because it was basically the same quote as the, the first time we had him on. Uh, he was basically saying that they unearth are one of the few bands that stuck to their roots uh, in metalcore. And that was the headline. And then they're like, oh, Ken said something about similar to this last year and then provided a link uh, to it. So thanks, I guess, to the PRP. Um, but that led to, uh, an interesting text message, uh, to Ken where he was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> right. Cause, cause I was like, oh, thanks for apparently saying the same thing as you did like a year ago. Cause I'm getting hits on it again. So that's hilarious. Yeah. And then, uh, what else has been going on? Oh, uh, light the torch apparently has a new drummer and it looks yeah. like it's Kyle from 36 crazy fists. Yeah. That's nuts. That's all the information I have. Yeah. Yeah. No, at this point, no one has uh, officially confirmed anything. Um, I mean, it's hard not to tell that it's Kyle. I mean, he has his whole chest tattooed and he has red hair. So, yeah, uh, it's pretty obvious. Um, and then, uh, what else has been going on in the news lately? Um, oh yeah. Norma Jean apparently didn't chart. Yeah. That's surprising to me. I mean, it's not surprising in the sense that like, I mean, I, in my opinion, I think they put out one of the heaviest records they've done in a long time, but you know, even their older, heavier records, uh, they charted. So, uh. I don't necessarily think it's a slam on Norma Jean. I think it's just a slam on on music now. Like week one sales, you really can't. W e a k. Yeah, you just can't. Uh, yeah, no joke. Uh, <laughs> no, I, first week sales. Basically, that being the most important thing, you know, as far as what tours you're going to get, and you know, all that stuff. And uh, it is it is a little sad to see that it didn't chart. But in my opinion, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's still a killer record. And one of the best they've put out in a long time. Did it live up to your expectations from Polar Similar? Yeah, I think it did because you know Polar Similar was a great record, uh, and I you know I still I still love it to this day. But uh, I feel like the new album uh, All Hail is just a little bit more um, straightforward, and uh, it's not as um, heavy on like the interludes and the you know uh, all the weird stuff that was on polar similar um i feel like i feel like they were able to accomplish the same goal with a little bit less uh tricks you know yeah well uh today's a drinking thing because a couple people have mentioned that we haven't been talking too much about beer lately uh i am drinking the blue moon ice coffee blonde uh, it's pretty solid, pretty drinkable, not really heavy on the uh, coffee flavor like I had thought it was going to be, and uh, it's kind of a shame. I mean, it's it's still a really great drinking beer. Um, I think Blue Moon, honestly, um, for all the different flavors they do, I think they're, a, to me, a little bit better than Sam Adams as far as like a more mainstream brewery or mainstream beer company uh, that makes a lot of different flavored beers. Um but there's no mistaking. I don't think you can pretty much. I don't think I've had a Blue Moon ever and not been like, oh no, that doesn't taste like Blue Moon because it still has that kind of that Blue Moon flavor at all times, that buttery flavor. Yeah, that's not really. It's not typically to my taste, but uh, I understand. I, I know what you're talking about because I've tried. I've tried other Blue Moon products and just been like, okay, I guess I just don't like this beer. That horchata one is the. Sh it's so fucking delicious, and the fact that we're right on the precipice of uh, it coming out, it has me very excited. Well, I'm excited because it's cold outside. I'm not actually excited because of that but when it gets cold out uh alicia starts putting out their really cool kind of different seasonal beers so uh right now i'm drinking alicia uh, ba uh bifrost i keep wanting to call it bit frost but it's a uh, it's a uh, it's bifrost winter ale and uh it's a pretty thick it's almost a stout it's it's so thick and you know how alicia products they just they, they always double down on the flavor to the point where it almost makes people sick <laughs> so uh you know i definitely uh i definitely love this and they you know they keep it they keep it elysian and make it an eight percent beer but this is not one that you're going to be throwing back four or five of them you're gonna have like two and and go to sleep <laughs> uh well, speaking of going to sleep we'll uh stop bothering you and let you get to the meat and potatoes of the interview with ivan moody so without further ado this is my chat with ivan moody and we'll talk to you afterwards <laughs> Hello. 
Hello. What's up? How are you doing? What's up? How are you? Doing good. I actually just was in your neck of the woods a couple of weeks ago for the fastest, uh, like, 28-hour trip ever. Oh, really? What were you doing out here? Uh, went to the uh, Lost Rages, actually. Oh, nice, man. Look at that. Cool. Did you have fun? Uh, I did. I surprised my wife, who went the day before me and had no clue I was coming. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> That's cool, dude. That is good, too. Got to keep in the gracious with the old lady, man. Oh, always. Um, so I have the pleasure, uh, this early evening for me, afternoon for you, uh, of talking to Ivan Moody of Five Finger Death Punch about his latest brand of Moody's Medicinals. They're a line of CBD and non-CBD health and wellness products. Uh, how are you doing? I am excellent, and thank you for asking. How the hell are you? I'm out of work. Uh, I have a sugar-free red, uh, monster, actually. Sorry, not Red Bull. And, uh, doing good. Good shit, man. All right. We haven't been surprised. You think it's that late at night. What time is it there? Uh, it's only about 5.30 here in Michigan. Oh, that's not bad. Okay, you're fine. No, dinner time. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, something that's interesting uh, that I kind of wanted to get into, you know, a lot of companies are vying to get into this space uh, of CBD products and so forth and health and wellness. Uh, how long has it been for you to get into this space, and what kind of drove you into wanting to get into this uh, very competitive uh, space of uh, health and wellness? Well, first off, uh, you know, it wasn't as competitive, I guess you'd say, uh, when I first started, um, you know, bringing this about. Uh, this is something that I've, you know, had, you know, as part of my regimen since I was a teenager, you know. I mean, I grew up in Colorado, so for me, uh, you know, marijuana and THC products along with CBD, have been something that, uh, you know, I've used as, uh, as a daily course for, you know, God knows how long at this point. So this was something that um, I wanted to, to put out there. Uh, basically, it came from um, from my last... But let me, let me tell this a different way. So I've been sober now, free of alcohol, for about two years, going on two years. And um, once I went into recovery, uh, you know, there are a lot of chemical imbalances and a lot of things that come along with that. Uh, your body doesn't just repair itself. So one day I, I wake up and I find myself I'm looking in the medicine cabinet and I've got like seven or eight different bottles of pills and, and things that have been, you know, prescribed to me. And I noticed that half of them are, are really just useless to me. I mean, there's such as, you know, anxiety and, of course, you know, helping with my appetite. And these are all things that I know how to do with myself, of course, from marijuana products as well as CBD oil. So I just came under the idea that, you know, I'm going to start working my way away from some of these prescribed drugs, and I'm going to start using the things that I know benefit and work for me. Um, I've been putting CBD oil in my waters before stage for years. Um, as well as, you know, I've, I've, I've endorsed marijuana and, and uh, marijuana as product since, you know, again, since I was, you know, 18, 19 years old. So for me, this is just a way of life. And it started to occur to me that there were people out there that were in the same position that I was. And, you know, it, it's amazing to me that we're pushing into 2020 now, and it's just catching on and, and being accepted on a wider space level. So for me, it was something that... Um, it needs to be brought to people's attention that there are alternative routes. Uh, they, they, you don't necessarily have to have to rely on. And then, believe me, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not saying that what your doctor told you to take is wrong or right in that matter. But for me personally, it was just something that um, that I needed. Especially, you know, 90% of all the throat sprays I was using on tours uh, are saturated with sugars and alcohol. And both of both things that I just I wanted nothing to do with, um, especially the alcohol part of it. So I, I surrounded myself with a, a collective of people that were very intelligent and, and, and aware of what the product is and what it does. Um, you know, and we hired lab rats, so to speak, to go in with us, and, and we were very hands-on in the entire process too to make sure that you know this is uh, it's an all-natural product. Again, there were no sugars and alcohols added. And uh, it was something that I would put in my body. You know, I'm not just somebody who, you know, somebody approached me with another company and was like, yeah, we want to put your name on this because we found out that you enjoy, you know, using CBD. It's far from me. Uh, you know, this is something that, I, again, I put in myself every day. Uh, and so be it not me, I'm not going to promote something that I myself wouldn't do. So it just kind of came full circle. And it seemed like you know, a legitimate thing to do. You know, if, if, I'm, if I'm going to uh, use something, you know, on such a permanent basis and, and, and in my daily routine, then, you know, again, 
I don't know other people. Yeah. Um, you know, something that's kind of interesting to me is my wife actually works in the pharmaceutical industry. And so a lot of times the stuff that she's trying to make and get passed through the FDA and so forth, there's like when they were trying to make a generic version of the EpiPen before the whole EpiPen crisis thing of the, the prices going up and so forth. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. And, you know, she was kind of explaining to me, like, she'd come home and be like, oh, we failed another batch and another batch because just things aren't working right. And we're getting phone calls and, and emails about how we're killing people waiting for this drug and so forth. And, you know, there's a lot of pressure and a lot of money spent trying to, to make these things and to get these things pushed through and so forth. And so I kind of get to see a different side of the industry than I think a lot of people do. And it kind of has made me wonder, you know, getting involved in the business of, of a health and wellness product like this. A, are you kind of surprised at what it takes to actually get these things to market? And secondly, are you kind of is it has it been interesting for you to have to kind of become an advocate yourself for explaining what CBD is and explaining that no, you're not going to take this and get high and you're not going to fail a drug test? Like, is it been kind of interesting for you to to kind of go through that process of a the the business side of things and the process of getting these things pushed through and so forth? Well, it's definitely. Uh, it's- and, and first and foremost, too, that, that's really cool that you are, you know, on that side of the fence because you definitely get to see the side of it that I do as well. And um, getting it out there, yeah, man, uh, it, it is not as simple as people think it is, and, and especially then because I was really, you know, I don't know if dabbling, but I was, I was putting forth efforts to get this out there prior to it being so, you know, massively accepted. So definitely um, something that I, I am... Uh, Fortunate enough to have great legal, legal people around me who know better of, of what they what they're doing and then how to approach things in the right way. Um, because as we know right now, every state, every city for that matter, is different. So um, that's definitely it's it's been um that's yeah it's been working working against me in some aspects, but you know, parts of it really it, it's been interesting to learn. Um, however, you know, like your wife. You know, I I get to see both sides of it and yourself for that matter, and I know that it's some it's inevitable. You know, I mean, this is something that it's so strange to me that that it's taken so much, and it it always goes back to the old schoolers, and and I'm gonna call them that because that that is what it is. You know, it's and it's it's generational gap to where you're talking about people who grew up in the double lettuce era. You know, where it's like, you know, this, this horrific fucking drug that you had. But these are the same people who use cocaine the number of guns and they had a four too. So, you know, it, 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 you know it, it's kind of a lost cause at that point. So for me, being a part of something that is innovative and, and, and something that has also been around for so long that it's, it's almost dumb trying and hasn't been more accepted. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm looking forward to waking up, with, you know, today that, Everybody's latched onto it and says, "Okay, let's proceed." You know, let, let's figure out how to make this beneficial for everybody. Um, you know, it's just it's an ongoing process, but it's it's, a, it's an absolutely unnecessary evil, in my opinion. So, yeah, you know, I kind of had wondered, and you you sort of touched on it a little bit. Do you hope that being an advocate for a more natural healing remedy, such as your your line of products and CBD products as, as a whole, is going to raise a wider awareness of the properties of CBDs and cannabinoids and, and so forth as a whole? Definitely. And how hard is it to – how hard was it, I guess I should say, because it's a, it's a product that exists, but how hard was it to ensure that you were putting out something and – Knowing that you you know you're putting your name on it, and it's not just some you know Gene Simmons fucking pop cola whatever some bullshit that's yeah. gonna not yeah. lead to people living a healthier, better life for themselves. How how hard was it to ensure that that was also represented in and that it's you know to be honest to be honest with you that was the easiest part because um, from the get go I put my foot down and I said this is how it's going to be this is going to be a natural product. There's going to be no, you know, carcinogens in it. It's going to be water based. There's going to be no alcohol. We're going to take the sugar element out of it. This is something that needs to be pro natural. Um, and it, it, so for me, I set that tone the second I even put put the idea out there. Um, and like you said, you know, I'm, I'm definitely not cashing in on anything. You know, this is something I take very seriously, and I use daily. So for me, I'm not just going to throw something out there and be like, well, I'm going to make a mint off of this fucking stuff. You know, it, that, 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 that wasn't my intention, man. My, you know, whether it takes off or not, it is still going to be something that I use. So, uh, you know, I mean, for, for me, that, that's really where, 
where the idea spawned from and, and where I, I intend on keeping it going. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a law in my camp that you, you don't do anything that you wouldn't yourself do. Or you don't put out any message or you yourself wouldn't do. That's about it. Uh, kind of one of the last few questions I have for you, since I know if you're a, a brief time and you're very busy, um, you know, you kind of hit on the fact that a lot of states and you coming from one of the states uh, in general that, you know, legalized marijuana. And, you know, just when I was out to Vegas, I, I didn't realize that there was dispensaries that you could just go to straight up on the strip and so forth. But with a lot of states starting mm -hmm. to legalize marijuana and you living in a state where it's legal and the West Coast and Pacific Northwest kind of being one of the earlier adopters of legalizing these things. Do you think this is a trend that more states are going to should be following, given the income it's producing for the states and the cities and so forth? And with all the good that the the plant is able to do for people, that you're going to see the barriers kind of breaking down and we're not going to have a – God, I was trying to think of that movie too as you were talking about, that movie from what, the 50s or 60s? Uh, Reefer Madness, that we're not going to basically yeah, have like a Reefer Madness. Reefer Madness. Oh, my God. <laughs> if you want to – that's got to be the best comedy of all time. You know what I mean? That's just like – I, I, it's insane to me to watch that fucking movie. And yeah, I, I, you know, the word trend, you know, will, will mis, you know, mislead people because it, it's not necessarily a trend. It's something that, again, people are waking up to the fact that, you know, we've been bullshitted. You know, this is not something that's harmful. And, and again, I mean, I can't tell anybody what's going to benefit them or what's not. I'm just simply saying that it works for me, man. And I think that the more it's, it's accepted and the more that people try it, uh, you know, you're going to see the results that, that are inevitable. You know, people aren't dumb, dude. It's a, it's a new era. It's, you know, we're not sitting around on our thumbs waiting to, you know, five guys at the FCC to, to, to push something through. You know what I mean? This is stuff that it's, it's well known. You know, it's, it's almost like you have to be blind not to accept it at this point. So I'm looking, again, I'm, I'm just looking forward to the day where, you know, every state, you know, in, in develops it and puts it out there. It's something that we embrace it. You know, it's change. And as scary as it is, it's, once again, inevitable. Here's a weird question, and I know this sounds really ignorant, but it's coming from a place of, for as much as you travel, just kind of a, a weird mm -hmm. thing of, do people not realize what it is? But when you're traveling, obviously you have a, a list of things and different sizes of things that you're allowed to travel with and not travel with and so forth. And it's made me wonder, mm -hmm. you know, traveling with some of your products, do people tell you, like, well, you can't bring us in, this is illegal. Like, have you have you run into the... I don't want to say stupidity, it's just the un uninformed -ness. That's not a word either, but whatever. Um, you know what, though? I like it. I'm going to steal that thing. <laughs> I, I like that. I'm just the uninformed ignis. <laughs> that was very good. Um, of course, you know, I run into it all over the place. But again, it's something that, you know, I, I stay in mind. So I guess I'm not allowed. I mean, of course, I do research and, and I, you know, making sure that where I'm going at, I'm aware of what the laws are and, and the differences are. But, uh, you know, again, it's, I, I actually, quick story, I did actually try to take um, one of my throat sprays through with me through an airport, and um, they had told me, they were like, well, in this city, you know, it hasn't been legalized yet, and this, that, and the other, and I and I looked at the security guard, and I'm not trying to get anybody in trouble, but this is true to fact, and I said, well, do me a favor, since you're going to throw it out, take it home and try it. I go, just, you know, I'm not going to tell anybody, you know, you, you fucking hit me up on my Instagram page and tell me what you thought of it. And he looked at me, but I can't do that. Blah, blah, blah. No bullshit. About a week and a half later, this guy hits me up on my Instagram page. He's like, I took you up on it. And I got to tell you, I'm ordering a batch. You know, it's fantastic. My wife loves it and everything. So it's not like anybody's really blind to it. Again, it's just getting involved and making sure that it's brought to people's attention so it is more, more widely accepted. And when you go in those situations, you know, you're always going to find me there in anything and everything you do. It's just a matter of like, sticking to what you know and beneficial to yourself. And as long as it's not harmful, then I, I don't see any reason it, it, it won't be, you know, wrapped up in, in big, fat, hugging bear arms. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> there was such a cheesy fucking way in that time. That was horrible. Okay. Yeah. Uh, lastly, I know you have a, a event going on. I th believe we're recording this on a Wednesday. On Friday or Saturday, I'm sorry, Saturday, you have an event basically launching this product uh, before your tour. Uh, but where can people find you? Mm -hmm. And or uh, if they're interested in buying any of the product, where can they find and follow uh, Moody's Medicinals? MoodysMedicinals.com. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, we're everywhere, man. Uh, just sign on, you know, log in. 
and uh, we'll do what we can to, to make sure that uh, we, we can assist you in any way possible. And, uh, again, you know, there are certain laws, of course, that go in course with, our, with certain areas, but uh, we are always, you know, on the upswing. Luckily, as I said earlier, we're lucky enough to have a, a team of, of strong lawyers to make sure that, uh, you know, that, that if, if you really are intending on trying it, we will help you figure out a way to uh, to do our best to get, to get it into your hands. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to talk about this, uh, and hopefully maybe see you somewhere on the road, because you're going to be on the road for quite a bit, it looks like. Man, I hope so. Yeah, it sounds like you're out here more often than not, so anytime you're out or uh, near you with show, hit me up, man. All about it. Awesome. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks for your time, man. <laughs> So that was my brief conversation with Ivan Moody uh, about his Moody's Medicinals. Uh, started off kind of interesting. I kind of left that little bit in there uh, about me just kind of bullshitting with him as soon as I got on. Because, I mean, goddamn, dude was so energetic and, and seemed genuinely interested in uh, in how my day and, and, and all this kind of stuff went. So I, I kept it in there. Yeah, definitely. He seems like a, like a stand-up guy. Um, I still don't love his band, but uh, that's okay. Maybe I'll like his uh, CBD products. You know, it's kind of funny because sometimes uh, in a upcoming chat I did with Aaron from Under Oath, um, you know, I kind of talked about how sometimes I get along with people when I'm not expecting, like when I don't really like their band. Like, I mean, I think we had a great conversation with Corey from Norma Jean, but admittedly, I'm not the biggest Norma Jean fan. I, I like them enough. I've seen them plenty of times. I think they're great live, but they just... It's never been a band where I'm like, you know what? I'm going to throw on blank record today. But I had a great time talking to him, and I think I would, you know, have a great time talking to him in person and so forth. And, you know, I think Amigo the Devil is another great one. Wasn't necessarily a big fan of his music. I, I do see what it does to a crowd of people. But just in getting to know Danny as the person and, and doing the chat with him and, and then subsequently hanging out with him when he was here in town, he's a great fucking person, and I really enjoy hanging out with him. Um so I don't know if it's this like this thing where maybe the the Uber fandom that maybe a lot of people would have where they're like, Oh my god, it's you and I love this thing, that's taken away and then I just I, I'm more focused on getting to know the person. And I think in that same regard, is Five Finger Death Punch my thing? Absolutely not. Um coincidentally enough, my dad called me like right after I did this interview and so I was talking with him and I was like, Oh, I just did this chat with Ivan and he goes, Can I ask you a question? And this might be stupid, but why do <laughs> people he goes, why do people hate Five Finger Death Punch? And I go, um, because they, I guess the the easiest way I can figure it out is that it's like the lowest common denominator for, for rock and metal. You know, it, it's kind, it's not as technical, so all the technical people who love that kind of style of music are like, well, fuck this thing. My band, like, the contortionist should be the biggest band ever, and, and things like that. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, I go, I saw him play in front of probably 8,000, 10,000 people at an outdoor thingy at a, a casino. And I looked around and I was like, I mean, it's not necessarily my thing, but the fact that it resonates with this many people obviously means they're doing something right. And on top of that, it's like, I'm not going to sit there and shit on all these people for liking something that I don't choose to like. That's not on them. That's on me. But it doesn't mean that as a fan of music and someone who gets what that experience is like, that I don't, that I'm not gonna just berate them and belittle them for it. So if you like Five Finger Death Punch, kudos to you. It just doesn't really do much for me. That being said, that Hired Gun documentary really made me fall in love with Jason Hook. And I think all the guys, like, you know, you listen to Zoltan on any of the other podcast, he is the embodiment of the American dream. So it's like everybody in the band seems like they're pretty fucking stand up people. So there's what's not to like. Right. Well, and that's it. Like, and I, I felt the same way, like when we talked to Ryan from Demon Hunter, you know, um, it's been pretty well documented in my feelings about their music, but we got done with it. And I was like, yeah, but I like the dude, you know, a hundred percent. I feel like I could sit down and talk to him for hours about a variety of different things. And, um, and, and it's all good. And, and I think that's, that's the most rewarding thing about this medium is that we are able to have those conversations and, you know, in a way it, it helps us not be so, especially, especially probably more me than you, John, uh, but not, not have so much, um, I don't want to use the word hate, but like as much vinegar, you know, against, uh, against a band just because you didn't like their record or whatever. And, uh, there's just a lot of negativity out there in, in the podcasting world and, uh, it, it's good to it's good to kind of try to bridge that gap whenever we can. Yeah, and I think the thing too, and you know, like I said, a lot of people might find this interview 
weird. Um, but I think the thing that was a little bit different from this one versus, say, the one we did with Chuck Billy of Testament over weed vape pens that neither of us, like, I don't use vape pens. You don't really use vape pens. I'm not big on smoking weed out of vape pens. So, like, that was a little bit harder to kind of to do. Whereas this one, I was kind of able to find my through line because it's like, okay, like, this is, you know, a, a natural product that a lot of people are starting to use and i've used it myself but on top of that like my wife is sort of in the pharmaceutical industry so there's a lot of these things that i have i see and am privy to that a lot of people don't get and i think that was actually kind of interesting because you know straight up we were told no five finger death this isn't a five finger death punch interview don't you know bring up five finger death punch shit and i was like don't worry i'm not going to (laughs) i wasn't going to anyway (laughs) yeah but i don't know if anyone really had the angle on this that I did. Um, And I know it sounds kind of braggadocious, but I think you can hear Ivan kind of really open up a little bit more and be into this, this chat because he kind of understands that maybe I get it a little bit more with, with how close I am with my wife and her, her career. I think that whenever you get into an interview like that, I think first of all, everybody's kind of got their guard up because there are a lot of podcasters that will say, you know, yeah, we won't ask him any questions about that. And they'll ask him two questions about CBD oil and then they'll turn around and be all like, so on your late last tour. Uh, so, and you know, first of all, the balls on those guys, immaculate. Uh, but we do try to maintain a relatively work, good working relationship with the people that set these things up for us. So, uh, you know, uh, playing by the rules isn't, uh, isn't really a bad thing in this case. And, you know, whether you care about CBD oil or not, I think that it was still a good chat beyond that. Like, it wasn't like, yeah, I mean, obviously, there's no way to sugarcoat it. We were hawking a product, you know. But at the same time, you know, we were able to kind of move past that, too. And and, and not in a way that, that was disrespectful to them or what they were doing there. Because, you know, time time's valuable. Speaking of time being valuable, let's go ahead and wrap up this episode. Uh, if you would like to keep up with Ivan and his Moody's Medicinals, you can do such over at Moody's Medicinals on Facebook and Instagram. Twitter is at Moody's Medicinal, uh, or you can simply go to Moody'sMedicinals.com, get all your uh, CBD, non-CBD health and wellness needs taken care of. Uh, he did say, obviously, uh, you know, it's not always available in every state, uh, so they will try to take care of that as best they can. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> And if you would like to keep up with all things Metal Nexus, you can find them simply enough at MetalNexus.net, Facebook at Metal Nexus, Instagram at Metal.Nexus, and Facebook at Metal underscore Nexus. And Dan will tell you where he can be found on the Nexus of the Internet. On the Internet Nexus, I can be found, well, I can be found on Metal Nexus uh, on this podcast, so that that's definitely helpful. I can be found on Twitter at DiscussMetalDan. You can send me an email at DiscussMetalDan at gmail.com. You can find out all the other stuff that I have going on at DiscussMetal.com. And uh, I'm also on Facebook. If you uh, if you know my name, you can find it. And if you would like to keep up with all things this podcast, you can find us simply enough at Brew Speak Pod on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Check us out on YouTube. Uh, we actually just posted the episode we did uh, last week of Judge Smith. Have a video up of that of when we did that at the intersection here in Grand Rapids. Uh, so we do have some videos on occasion. Uh, even that one we talked about, uh, Ryan from Demon Hunter, uh, that is up on our YouTube channel. Simple enough, Bruce Beat Pod, brutally speaking, however you want to look for it, we're there. Uh, interact with us on there or in general. Uh, rate, review, subscribe if you would like to support us non monetarily. Uh, all of that goes a long way, helps us out. Uh, if you would like to support us monetarily, uh, I know I've said this the last couple of weeks, uh, we should be getting the pins in pretty much any time now. And uh, if you would like to support us monetarily outside of buying those pins, you can support us over on patreon.com slash Pod. Got a lot of perks over there that you can uh, partake in. And for the Brutally Speaking Podcast, I am John. And I am Dan. We will talk to you all next time.